My name is John Edgar Browning and I'm a doctoral student in American Studies at the University of Buffalo. Uh, my research strengths are Dracula and vampires and, and monsters and how those figures relate in popular culture and how they speak to us. Vampires, or figures we would recognize today as vampires, have existed in many different cultures from one end of the planet to the other since time immemorial. They've enjoyed many names. The Romanian Strigoi, the Greek Vrykolakas, the Chinese Changshi, the Filipino Aswang. In every case, though, it's almost always the same. They evoke great fear. They live off the blood or vital essence of others, and they don't die very easily. However, studying the vampire of a particular legend, of a particular place at a particular time, can tell us much about that particular culture. For these cultures, the figure of the vampire enabled them to make sense of and cope with things they really didn't understand. Well, the vampires we know today in popular entertainment function more or less in the same way. Only now, they serve more or less as political billboards that can be torn down and sort of repapered at a moment's demand. Among other things, vampires can tell us metaphorically who to go and who not to go to bed with, who the dominant groups in society are and who the inferior ones are. Take Dracula, for example. Whoever he resembled and whomever he took as a victim in the 1930s, has changed with each consecutive decade. The more we understand Dracula, the better we can understand ourselves. Vampires, monsters, they're just us. What we aspire to be, what we're told to hate most about ourselves, what we secretly yearn for but shouldn't. Vampires are the archaeologist's digging site, the geologist's multi-layered rock face, the crime scene investigator's murder weapon. To paraphrase a famous scholar, monsters in general and vampires in particular are pure culture. The vampire's body is really just a, a cultural body.